Hi, I'm Tom Stevenson and welcome to Understanding Construction Drawings. This is video number nine and today we're going to be looking at the construction notes. If you haven't seen previous videos, you can check my playlist out or check in the description below. I'll list some of the previous videos in this particular series. If you click subscribe, uh, you'll get a lot of information and videos. If you check the playlists and previous videos, on everything to do with construction, from construction project management, planning and scheduling, uh, to site management, Microsoft Project, a whole array of different topics. As I'm a professor of construction management and trying to share this information and help you learn along the way. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, construction notes, that is basically what you find on the drawings and it gives you details of information of stuff that you don't want to put on the actual drawings themselves. Uh, it comes usually on the first page. Sometimes I've seen it on the last page. There's no kind of drawing police out there for this kind of thing. But basically, it's all the information that you don't want to crowd up your floor plans and drawings with right so it's how does the designer put this information in a logical way that is easy for you to understand and follow well this set of drawings is for a production subdivision what i mean by that is means that there was a lot of houses being built on this particular project as opposed to a custom home Either way, a custom home, it would still have a set of construction notes with it. But what they tend to do in production building, they standardize the notes and then they refer to things on the actual drawings themselves. So these little numbers that you see here in these hexagons, they're referring to numbers that you would find on the actual drawings themselves. So like five and six, 12 and 13, sometimes they're pointed towards something like the foundation wall here. Sometimes they're just in the middle sort of saying back and forth and it depends what it's describing. But what you can be sure of is that whatever it's pointing at or whatever area it's hovering over, it's referring to something in that particular area. It's not always exactly what you think it would be, but it is in that particular area. And usually if you're that close to the information, it's pretty close in the construction notes to find. Um, so for example, in these particular drawings, as I said, they're for a production subdivision. I've, we've talked a little bit about them in previous videos. Uh, this has a number of front elevations on the house. So the elevation of a house, if you recall, and I'm keeping this fairly straightforward for you, and I'll just go over here. Maybe I can just spin this around a little bit for you to see better. There you go. You have a front elevation on the actual house. And... The front elevation gives you a flat, straight on view of it. Well, this particular subdivision, this particular design, it has an elevation A and it has an elevation B. So it's really the same house, but basically different fronts to the house. And that gives a different look as you go along the street and you're referring and you're looking to things. So it's important to know, you know, on a set of drawings like this, you always wanna look at the legend and say, uh, or the title blocks uh, and see what it's referring to because there's, in this case, about 21 pages and some of the pages refer to elevation B and some of the pages refer to elevation A. So you wanna know what is it that we're looking at, elevation A or elevation B as is the case, right? And it looks quite different, the front elevation of B, this one here, than elevation A. You can see you got a nice little gable roof on the front over here. You got a segmental arch coming across here. It's all brick on the front. Uh, the other one's actually brick as well, but it's got a little flat roof over the porch. You can see a whole bunch of hips on the outside. If I go back to elevation A, up uh, just up here a few, um, you got a gable here, but look, you got a big gable roof over here. You got a bullseye arch over there. So there's a number of differences that you'll see between the different sets of drawings when you refer to it. All right, so let's go back to the construction notes for a few minutes, and I'll just rotate this while we're talking here. There we go. And as I said, you've got these hexagon symbols here uh, on your drawings, and we'll maybe just shrink that down a little bit or expand that up. There we go. And 
Um, you can see over here, it's got also the lintel schedule or header schedule. If you're in the US, they would probably refer to in Canada, we refer, refer to beams over doors and windows to be lintels. Uh, we also see over here a legend and the legend's pretty important because on the legend you can see uh, the uh, different symbols that are going to be used on the drawing. So we see there the symbols that are used on for uh, electrical aspects and uh, some of the plumbing aspects like a floor drain. This is for a hose bib where you turn on and off your hose. Solid bearing supports for beams. Uh, point load for a concentrated load coming down in a wall section. Um, these are where you would find that, as well as abbreviation like a flat arch, a fixed glass, above finished floor, girder truss, double truss, double joist, all that information there. Um, so it's very useful for that uh, kind of detail and that kind of information being shown. Being in Canada, we're showing both in metric and in imperial here a lot of the information. Uh, these drawings are imperial though, for the most part. Uh, our building codes are of course metric, so that's why again you have to, if you're submitting drawings, uh, provide the metric sizing as well. Now, um, let's take a little bit of a look here. So we looked at number five a second ago. Let's take a look here. Number five, and that is pointing towards the foundation wall, right? You see five, six, 12, 13. Let's just take a look. Now I wanna find out a little bit of information here. So what's that talking about? All right, so that's talking about a 200 millimeter, eight inch poured concrete foundation wall. So the thickness of the wall is eight inches with 20 MPA or 2,900 pounds per square inch. That's the compressive strength of the concrete. Bitumous damp proofing. Well, that's going on the outside of the wall. And then what that does is it prevents moisture from penetrating through the wall. All right, it's usually a black tar coating sort of that, that gets sprayed on on the outside. Now, there's a difference. We could get into the difference between damp proofing and waterproofing, which is quite significant. Damp proofing is what you're allowed to do if there's not hydrostatic pressure present, meaning that the water table's not higher than the wall and it's putting like a pressure against the wall. You'd have a big problem in that case. So you have to waterproof and you have to have sump proof. You have a uh, sump pump and you have to depressurize underneath the slab, a whole bunch of stuff. But in this case, we've got damp proofing, unless when they excavate and you find that there's some unknown condition, then you would have to waterproof it. All right, optional mineral fiber insulation or equivalent drainage layer. Well, I don't know anybody that really does this. Some of you can put that in the comments if you do, but we all do this, the equivalent drainage layer. That's usually this bubble board that goes, it's really like a roll of plastic. It's got these bubble beads on it, goes against the foundation wall. And if any moisture or water gets behind, it allows it to drop very quickly to the footings and the footings are wider than your foundation walls and they support the foundation walls. If you go back and look at some of my previous videos, I talk about that, but the footings basically support the foundation walls and they take all the weight from up above and they distribute it to the undisturbed soil that they should be resting on. And so this is coming down here and we've got that drainage layer. So that's helping to protect uh, the foundation from moisture intrusion because at the bottom you're going to have a number six remember it said five and six you're going to have a weeping tile which is this black pipe corrugated pipe that basically when the water comes down it takes it away takes it away from the foundation and that's what you want to have happen if you look at some of my residential construction videos on my playlist i go into this in quite a lot of detail with a lot of visuals around it this being construction drawings and kind of sticking to the drawing aspect uh, reading and interpreting it so we've got that weeping tile going around crushed stone around all the weeping tiles going up and we've got a footing and the footing is 19 inches by six inches so it's 19 inches wide by six inches thick and that is the footing size for this particular house going around the outside and footing size is based on from building code perspectives the number of floors that's being supported 
all right? The type of weight that it's being supported on those floors. Uh, it can be designed around soil conditions. There may be reinforcing requirements that may also be required. So that's why I'll usually say as per soil report. So it maybe won't be the standard that way because that can change. And that can have adjustments based on that. So as per soil report means you're going to have an engineering consultant is going to check the soil conditions to make sure that it's going to be able to bear, have the bearing capacity to carry the weight of the overall house on it. So you can see all that information that we're getting from here just from this one little note. And you notice there's a lot of notes. So it depends on what you're doing. Look at this. 10 and 11 that's all for stairs and guardrails and handrails right that's all the information that you're going to find on that so there's a lot of detailed information and most of this information it doesn't always have to be but it see where it says obc for us that's the ontario building code right so we're in ontario canada that's our building code for you it might be for your building code uh whatever the requirements are referring to because usually we want to make sure that there's clarity and nobody's contravening any building codes but sometimes the construction notes could be going beyond what the building code requirement is because the designer wants you to do xyz above and beyond the building code just remember the building code is the minimum set of standards it's not some maximum standard or anything that's beyond minimum and but also remember that anything less than the building code or doesn't meet the building code requirements is illegal so you can look at it from that perspective as well so you see all the information there that's listed and this is where the construction notes come in so they are very very important and if you learn nothing else these reference symbols if that's how your designer has done the drawings they're not always done exactly that way will save you a ton of time though like this just you know you just look at it what's number seven referring to being the foundation or basement it is probably referring to the concrete floor i would bet so if we look at it and there it is concrete slab on a hundred millimeter crushed stone with damp proofing uh, 3600 PSI concrete without damp proofing. It's giving you a choice there, and this is from the building code too. So in something simple like that, it's referring to uh, basically your thickness of the concrete slab uh, on four inches of crushed stone with damp proofing. Damp proofing simply in that, that framework means that you're gonna put a plastic or polyethylene down as a membrane between the gravel and the concrete slab, uh, or you could use a stronger concrete, which would be less penetrable by moisture, and then you wouldn't have to use the damp proofing. So you have these different choices that come in and play on those facts. So that's kind of what I wanted to cover today with regards to the construction notes. And I just wanted to give you a quick introduction to it. Kind of covered it a little bit in some of the previous videos, but we get into a lot of details, sort of step by step, break by break, depending on what you're after with this as we continue on and review some of the previous videos and the upcoming videos. So I'm Tom Stevenson, wishing you a wonderful day and we'll see you next time. Oh, and don't forget to click subscribe and leave a comment or question. Till next time, bye for now.